Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa ratified and issued Law 43 of 2018, amending some of the provisions of Law 13 of 1975 on regulation of government employee pensions and retirement, after its approval from the Shura and Council of Representatives. The amendment stipulated the replacement of clauses 1c and 2 of Law 13 of 1975 on regulation of government employee pensions and retirement. The provisions of this law shall not apply to Borough and Defence Force and public security personnel and employees in the public institutions and general directorates excluded from the provisions of this law and subject to an issuance from the edict from the Prime Minister. The second clause stipulated that whilst observant to the provisions of Article 11 of Law 13 of 1975, the subscription of government employees shall be calculated for temporary employees, not less than subscriptions deductible from the salary of permanent employees in a similar position. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, and Chairman of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received today the student Ala Musa Al Ghalaf, who achieved a percentage of 100 in the General Secondary School Science branch. His Highness Sheikh Nasser hailed the support offerings received from the Honorary President of the Royal Charity Organisation, His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, who is the first supporter of philanthropic and humanitarian work in the Kingdom. His Highness hailed the directors of His Majesty the King of providing all forms of support to orphans and His Majesty's keenness on increasing and unifying efforts to support them and provide decent life for them and their families. His Highness Sheikh Nasser congratulated the student on her achievement, which was a result of her hard work throughout her education, expressing pride and pleasure in the achievement, which was made by a student supported by the RCO and His Majesty the King. For his part, the Secretary General of RCO, Dr Mustafa Al Said stated that the government, the achievement is a result of the support of His Majesty the King, His Highness Sheikh Nasser and his student's mother. He added that upon the directives and support of His Highness Sheikh Nasser, Ala Aghalaf was granted a scholarship at Arabian Gulf University to study medicine. For her part, Ala Said Musa Aghalaf expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King and His Highness Sheikh Nasser for their support. The first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid Al Khalifa, received today at Al Wadi Palace, Russian Ambassador to Bahrain, Vajif Garayev, upon the end of his term as Ambassador to the country in the Kingdom. His Highness Sheikh Khalid hailed the bilateral relations, affirming their developments in various fields and that they contribute to strengthening and building partnerships and to cooperation to achieve more development in both countries. His Highness affirmed the development of bilateral relations after the visit of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to Russia in February 2016, which increased cooperation between the two countries. Sheikh Khalid praised the efforts of the Russian ambassador, which strengthened relations between the two countries, which had a clear impact in advancing relations towards broader frameworks of cooperation, especially at the sports sector. For his part, Russian Ambassador expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Khalid, praising his role in supporting Bahraini-Russian relations, also expressing thanks to the warm welcome and support he received. He stressed his confidence that the relations between Bahrain and Russia will witness more fruitful cooperation that serves the aspirations of the leadership of both countries and their people. Under the patronage of the Commander-in-Chief of the Bahrain Defence Force, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, and in the presence of the Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Diab bin Saga al Noemi, a ceremony was held to honour the winning units in the programme of testing and evaluation of combat and administrative readiness for the year 2018. The ceremony began with the recitation of verses from the Holy Quran. Assistant Chief of Staff Major General Ghanem Ibrahim Al Fadala briefed the audience on the programme. The BDF Commander-in-Chief honoured the winning unit, which was the Royal Special Force.
Then, the banner of the winning units of the programme was raised. The Commander-in-Chief then delivered a speech in which he congratulated the winning units in the programme. He praised the high level of readiness and efficiency demonstrated by the units, which reflect the BDF's ability to carry out various missions in terms of combat, administration and training under all circumstances. The Commander-in-Chief affirmed that under the leadership of His Majesty the King, the BDF will continue to perform its duties in defending the country, healing the efforts and sacrifices of BDF personnel at national and regional levels in this regard. He stressed the importance of developing the BDF due to its vital role in supporting the military and administrative development in the Kingdom. At the end of the ceremony, the Commander-in-Chief expressed appreciation for all the efforts that resulted in improving the level of combat and administrative readiness in the BDF units, wishing everyone success in the evaluation tests of combat and administrative readiness in the coming years. The ceremony was attended by the Director of BDF's General Command Headquarters, General Hassan Mohammed Saad, and Inspector General, General Abdullah Hassan al Noemi, as well as senior BDF officers. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, participated in the summit of the Security Council on combating the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction held at the United Nations headquarters in New York City, headed by the United States President, Donald Trump which aims to draw attention to the need to confront the problem of proliferation of weapons of mass destruction and to enable the Security Council to ensure compliance with its decisions to address and prevent such weapons in the hands of terrorist groups. The summit discussed ways to hold accountable states that violate the relevant Security Council resolutions and the means of strengthening the existing sanctions regime in the event of non-compliance with these resolutions the mechanisms to increase the capacity of the states to meet their obligations in accordance with the criteria contained in the Security Council resolutions on the non-proliferation of weapons of mass destruction and the measures member states should take to emulate and provision of technology related to nuclear and chemical weapons. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, attended the high-level meeting on the action for peacekeeping under the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The meeting was held at the United Nations headquarters in New York City under the chairmanship of the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, and was attended by over 100 member states and several regional and international organisations. This high-level meeting discussed the Secretary General's initiative, the Action for Peacekeeping, A4P, that aims to enhance collective cooperation with the United Nations peacekeeping operations and the mutual commitment to achieve excellence in the performance of tasks. The Minister expressed appreciation for the important role played by United Nations peacekeeping operations in helping many countries to overcome the risks and challenges and achieve peace. He added that this should continue and that all countries should ensure its success. He also praised the efforts of the United Nations Secretary General in reforming the United Nations peacekeeping operations so that it can meet various challenges. They also reviewed the successes of peacekeeping op operations and the various challenges they faced and the resources and capabilities needed to enable peacekeeping missions to achieve peace in the countries they operate in. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to the President of Yemen. President Abid Rabi Mansur Hadi. This came during a meeting where the Yemeni President received the Minister of Foreign Affairs on the sidelines of the 73rd session of the United Nations General Assembly in New York. The President of Yemen also conveyed his sincere greetings to His Majesty the King 
and expressed appreciation for His Majesty's solid positions on the Arab affairs and the great support extended by Bahrain at various levels to the people of Yemen. He also praised the keenness of the Kingdom to maintain the security and stability of Yemen, wishing Bahrain further progress and prosperity. For his part, the Minister expressed the Kingdom's pride in the brotherly relations with Yemen, praising the efforts made by the Yemeni President for maintaining development and stability. He also reiterated Bahrain's support for these efforts and its keenness as an active member of the Arab coalition supporting legitimacy in Yemen to reach a political solution that guarantees the establishment of security and peace and preserves Yemen's unity, sovereignty and territorial integrity. The Kingdom of Bahrain has announced the establishment of diplomatic relations with the Republic of Kiribati with the desire that the two countries consolidate the friendly relations and cooperation. These diplomatic ties are to be based on equality and mutual respect for sovereignty, independence, territorial integrity and non-interference in the internal affairs of each other as per the stipulations of the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations of 1961. Earlier, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, signed a joint statement with the President of Kiribati, Taneti Mamai, to establish diplomatic relations between the two countries. Sheikh Khalid affirmed that this move comes within the framework of Bahrain's openness to the world and its keen desire to strengthen cooperation with all countries for common interests, expressing hope that bilateral relations with Kiribati will soon witness a boost in all fields for the benefit of both countries and people. The President of Kiribati expressed pride in establishing diplomatic relations with Bahrain, stressing his country's keenness to develop bilateral relations and coordination on various issues of common concern. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, participated in the opening session of the general debate of the United Nations General Assembly in its 73rd session in New York City yesterday, in the presence of the heads of states and governments, as well as senior officials from member states and governmental and non governmental organisations. The Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Antonio Guterres, gave a statement in which he presented his annual report on the work of the United Nations. He reviewed the challenges facing all world countries, including the growing chaos and the situation in Yemen and Syria, the Palestinian cause, as well as terrorism, nuclear threat and climate change. He also stressed that facing these challenges requires strengthening collective action and cooperation among all countries for peace and economic progress, noting the Jeddah peace agreement between Eritrea and Ethiopia signed in Saudi Arabia. The President-elect of the 73rd Session of the United Nations General Assembly, Maria Fernanda Pernosa, reviewed some of the threats facing all countries, namely violence, climate change, poverty, racism, wars, economic conflicts and terrorism. She stressed that these threats are contrary to the objectives of the Charter of the United Nations and impose the need for joint responsibility, joint action and dialogue in the interests of all. In his speech before the United Nations General Assembly, US President Donald Trump praised the positive steps taken in the Middle East following his trip to Saudi Arabia last year, as the Gulf states have opened a centre to target extremism and terrorism. He also noted the cooperation of Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates to reach a political settlement in Syria and Yemen, in addition to working to stabilise the situation. He also affirmed the commitment of the United States of America to achieve peace between Palestinians and Israelis. With this regard to Iran, the President of the United States stressed that Iran's leaders sow chaos, death and destruction. He added that they do not respect the sovereign rights of nations. Instead, they plunder the nation's resources to enrich themselves and spread mayhem in the Middle East and far beyond. Among the most prominent speakers of the general debate of the United Nations General Assembly in its first day is the President of Egypt, Abdel Fattah el-Sisi, His Majesty King Abdullah II of Jordan, in addition to a number of heads of delegations and states participating in the work of the General Assembly. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met with the President of the 67th Session of the United Nations General Assembly, Victor Meresh, on the sidelines of the 73rd Session of the United Nations General Assembly in New York City. 
During the meeting, the Minister praised the efforts made by Mr Jamarish for developing and enhancing the role of the UN General Assembly during his presidency of the 67th session. He also commended his keenness to increase cooperation with Bahrain and enhance international cooperation to meet the challenges facing the international community, wishing him further success and prosperity. For his part, Mr Doremish expressed pride in meeting with the Minister of Foreign Affairs and commended Bahrain's policy of constant cooperation with the United Nations in all its organs and its keenness to support the efforts to establish security and peace all over the world, wishing Bahrain further progress and prosperity. The Director General of Criminal Investigation and Forensic Science announced yesterday the arrest of 15 vandals for indulging in abusive activities to cause chaos in Malkia during Ashura season. He said that an investigation had revealed the Iranian Revolutionary Guards had financed the operation through terrorists living as fugitives in Iran, mainly members of the February the 14th group. Those arrested are Ahmed Abdul Rasul Kamiz, a security guard, Adil Abdul Wahid Dawish, a worker, Abdullah Issa Dawish, worker, Ali Nabil Mahdi, worker, Mahdi Ali Jaffa, worker, Muhammad Yusuf Nu, unemployed, Hussein Issa Ali, worker, Sadiq Jaffer Abdul Jabbar, worker, Ali Hussainian Hamza, student, Hamid Ahmed Abdul Wahab, unemployed, Ahmed Muhammad Ali, unemployed, Habit Maki Ali, unemployed, Kazim Abdul Razul Khatham, security guard, Said Hassan Said, student, Abdullah Juma Habib, unemployed. The Director General added the investigation had also shown the gang of vandals was being directed by a person who had been arrested in a terrorism case in February 2018. Legal action has been taken in the case and those arrests have been referred to the public prosecutor. The Director General said that any activities that disturb the civil peace and harm the social harmony would be tackled in accordance with the law. Saudi Arabia's embassy in Bahrain celebrated 88 years of national unity with people from all over Bahrain joining on the joyous event. More in this report with Sarah Albrecht. The Embassy of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to Bahrain initiated its National Day event in Bahrain in the presence of hundreds of people, alternating from princes, diplomats, scholars, journalists and media personalities to students and guests, all sharing the common joy of celebrating 88 years of unity. I would like to express my greatest wishes to the custodian of the uh, two holy mosques and to, his, to, to the Crown Prince on the occasion of the 88th anniversary of our uh, establishment of founding uh, of uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. We remember the uh, uh, genuine effort that's been done by our founder uh, that have uh, gave and granted Saudi Arabia the prosperity, the security, uh, and what we now see and enjoy from the economic uh, uh, well-being and from the social and from the uh, educational and from the uh, yeah, any prosperity that we we were enjoying. That's all happened because the love that is genuine between the, the uh, leadership and between the top to the, to the, to the, uh, to the uh, people of Saudi Arabia. The long-standing historic relationship between the two countries spreads across a vast field of corporations, including education, health, security and so much more. These corporations stem from Saudi Arabia and Bahrain's unified belief in progress in the region for a better future for all their citizens. Education, it's the key of um, the knowledge and the key of the life. So we are really uh, working uh, so hard and cooperating with the Bahraini uh, uh, authority to have international school and to have a school 
where uh, Bahraini and Saudi get benefits from the best education uh, to make uh, 2030 to have education equal to everybody. This is Sarah Break reporting for Bahrain International. The Minister of State for the Middle East and North Africa at the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, Alistair Burt, praised the participation of This is Bahrain in cooperation with the King Hamid Global Centre for Peaceful Coexistence in organising the Bahrain Coexistence Exhibition on the sidelines of the 73rd session of the United Nations General Assembly in New York City. He affirmed that the presence of the Bahraini exhibition as one of the main corridors of the United Nations reflects the international recognition of Bahrain's pioneering experience of peaceful coexistence and its noble human values. During his visit to the exhibition, Minister Burt pointed to the Kingdom's long history of promoting the values of moderation and peaceful coexistence between different religions, sects and cultures. 